Hi everyone, today I bring you the last entry in the Hand That Feeds HQ's review Advent Calendar 2021. And the song I bring to you today is Hound Roars Syndrome, a song suggested by Toma. Thank you very much for your suggestion and so glad to see that there are other fans of Hound Roar or even Dig Rock as a franchise out there. If you guys want to learn a little bit more about each band and the music they released so far, I have reviews of all the songs released so far by all bands. Those are available at the Hand That Feeds HQ's official website and the link should be in the uh, description below. So let's kick off this reaction slash review of Hound Roar's Syndrome, a song that I love to beats. So melancholic right off the bat with this melody, simplistic melody on the piano, but a massive work done of, on the vocal end to bring those emotions forward. And Toshiki Toyanaga is the, the man for the job because he can basically sing any music genre with any singing tone and basically do the craziest things within a song and still do those with a relative ease. So he was the man for the job, he was the perfect choice for Hound Roar's vocal. <laughs> This is acid jazz. For those that may not know, jazz music is a, a specific music genre. Then you have acid jazz, that is a subgenre within jazz. It's usually a mix of funk with soul, disco, and jazz itself. And it is much bouncier. I would say uh, more easy listening for those that are not familiar with jazz. Jazz purists usually hate acid jazz. Those that love acid jazz also tend to like jazz. So it's a really weird relationship between purists and those that love acid jazz because of its fusion. And the, the fact that it is a fusion of, of music genres it makes it so that the music can explore different things beyond the complex melodies on the guitar or the weird um, tempos going on in the drums or even how intricate it is the bass line usually for uh, jazz music. Everything that is commonly found in jazz music is found here, although you do have instead of emotional guitar riffs sometimes a bit slowed, sometimes a bit, a bit fast, depending if it is swing or bebop jazz. You now have those here that's funk going on in those guitars, that's a really groovy bass line that is a mix of funk with disco and jazz. It is punchy, it is hearty, it is the, the really the heart of this song. It is pushing it forward. Then you have the piano. Piano is much uh, in jazz uh, style. It's being played in jazz style. It is simple. It is bright. It is uh, perfect to add that loungy vibe to this song. The vocals that are really smooth and mellowed complement that. And what you get is not only a good intro, but this lead up to the very first verse is really, really warm and loungy. It's a, uh, the type of song that you would say it's, it is laid back and made with good vibes all around. <laughs> song 
he's so good. Um, I do love the groove that is going on in the verses. It is incredibly danceable while still being jazz, or in this case, while being acid jazz. And that's thanks to having that fusion of funk and disco in the song that make it sound really, really danceable. On the vocal end, acid jazz, what does it change for Toyonaga? It makes him sing in a way that is more soulful. Acid jazz has a lot of soul-inspired vocals and you see him going for a really melodic, smooth performance that fits really well with this danceable uh, instrumental. That section with the drums and the bass line is crazy. It's crazy how intricate it is while not, not sounding intricate at all. It's technical, the tempo changes, the work that is being done on the splash and the ride and on the snare. The bass drum is going crazy, uh, serving as an accent to those um, crazy um, rhythms that are going on in the drums. Then you have the bass line that is deep, low, pretty intense. It is full of emotion there, which is pretty interesting as a detail. And it's not violent. Usually when you listen to a bass line that is really low, you will think, well, this song sounds a bit violent. It's not violent, it's pretty loungy and that deep bass line only adds to that uh, interesting and laid back vibe that you get from this song. A little bit of blues going on in that guitar, especially the last part of the riff. Sounds bluesy. It's not necessarily blues, but sounds bluesy. I like the emotion going on in that guitar riff. And I like how up until then it was almost in a wah-wah style of guitar playing uh, or wah-wah effect going on. It's really... it adds a bit of a dated touch to the song. You want that to happen in a song such as this. This is a style that sounds... It is modern, but at the same time it sounds a bit dated. It has a unique vibe to it that uh, makes it sound one step or one one step ahead of the others, one floor above everyone else in terms of quality. And notice on your right you have the piano going for little details on those notes. It's not necessarily playing a melody, it's playing some um, simple one-off notes to that are really a representation or a good way to exemplify how ja what jazz is all about. It is improvisation and it sounds like it is improvisation, although of course you will think well, this is a 2D music project, there's not much uh, about improvisation in there. Everything is already laid out for to be performed and later on recorded. Well, there's some level of improvisation in there. We don't know if the person recording that those parts on the piano actually was meant to do that or not. It sounds like it is improvisation because those are uh, notes that are uh, not working within a chord. So it sounds more like accents that felt it felt right for the pianist to add those given the song that he was listening to, especially if he was listening to the song, of course, without the piano in there, the song sounds incredibly bassy. So you need to have some chords or notes much on the brighter side on the piano so that you can make a good contrast with those and in a way help highlight the vocals. This is a good 
break and I stopped in the middle of that just to add this comment because this is a really good break into the bridge and you'll see how uh, acid jazz really performs without a vocal and you'll see just how loungy the vibe you get from these is almost like you are in the late evening in a lounge um, drinking something or hanging out with something seeing or watching in the in the far the sun setting the sound of waves in the background it is a song that is pretty cinematic for me I do like this kind of song because it is really melodic it highlights the vocals it needs a good vocal first off to sound well so the vocalist needs needs to be technical in order to pull off a song like this acid jazz is not easy to perform very few I reckon no say you artist has had ever venture, ventured to acid jazz before you do have artists performing jazz a good example of that is Makoto Furukawa that has been making his solo career all about jazz music just recently he changed a little bit his sound but it, it, he has been performing jazz music almost all his career as a solo artist at least so far but acid jazz is not easy to perform it requires a different uh, type of skill set uh, it, it needs a singer with a much more complete skill set just like Toyonaga uh, has so it is a song made for technical singers although it doesn't sound technical at all That guitar solo is so good, so good. The, the everything about that section in the bridge, uh, everything about the bridge, is really impressive. I, it is a good way to highlight what is acid jazz and bec and why this is so different from jazz music. You only had really the piano going in uh, jazz. Uh, type of sound right there perhaps the drums midway through when there there were some tempo changes in there but the rest of the song is pretty much funk added to jazz and you have those good vibes going on in there thanks to that fusion you have the class and the elegance of jazz music and you have the fun the good vibes of funk and it is the perfect marriage. I still don't know why jazz purists hate acid jazz because that's pretty much an awesome music genre that makes the best out of the original and blends it with another music genre that for, for a change actually works with jazz and ends up delivering something really with a real good vibe into it. It is a, a kind of feel-good song that you get every time you have acid jazz. Interesting on the vocal end is that Toyonagi is going for legato, long notes, he's holding some notes until he lets them go and goes to another. Um, he's making some pauses between uh, parts and he's deliberately adding a lot of flair to his performance by adding some vibrato in there. <laughs> sound and at 
So good. Hound Roar is that type of band that I wished more people actually enjoyed because they have a unique sound even within 2D rock music and among 2D rock uh, 2D music projects um, there's not acid jazz in there. I reckon no music project beyond dig rock has acid jazz which is a really a, a first and a bold move because not many people know what is acid jazz and starting from that uh, even earlier than that not many people actually appreciate jazz music so to find acid jazz that is even more niche than jazz in this project was surprising but that's a surprise that I love a lot because I do love jazz and Acid Jazz is a subgenre that I appreciate a whole lot for its technicality and how loungy it sounds. It's really the type of music that I want to listen to if I am at a lounge or if I am driving um, seaside. So I do like this kind of music to relax and take in the good vibes. Appreciate a good voice, appreciate a good bass line. Everything about this instrumental is good. You really don't have any instrument not standing out. The piano is off the charts in the intro. It goes a long way with those um, accents that are improvised midway through the song. Those shine actually in the chorus. The guitar work is really, really good. It, it ranges from wah-wah guitar riffs that are really particular to disco music even funk to some extent. Then you have uh, the full-on funk guitar riffs in the chorus. You have a lot of emotion from blues coming uh, into this song through the guitars in the bridge during the solo. And you have the drums going crazy from drum signatures for, for rock music and for jazz music. It is in a um, I would say in the middle of both, but more leaning towards uh, textbook rock in terms of sound. It doesn't sound as chaotic uh, as jazz us usually does, or as deliberately odd in terms of tempo choice. So that's uh, an interesting twist made to the song. It's not full on jazz. It has some moments in which it brings a uh, into the mix jazz elements but there's other moments in which it is rock uh, textbook rock um, tempo to make the, the thing uh, things flow really smoothly um, the vocals are extremely technical the, it, they may not sound like that to many of you but those vocals are extremely technical there's some drama being added by Toshiki Toyonaga. He's purposely opening some vowels to sound more dramatic when those vowel vowels didn't need to be that open, so that's deliberate from him to add more emotion to the song. Then you have the legato, the long notes, the, the stops between uh, notes. I do not know the technical term for that. And once again... <laughs> I do compose music, but I do not know uh, theory, so that's one uh, thing that I have against me. And then you have those uh, beautiful ad-libs that he adds in some parts of the songs. Uh, you notice those particularly in the outro to the song, which is to say the last part of the song, in which the, the guitars go for a last spurt in emotion and the bass line is really, really, really punchy. All in all, Hound Roar's Syndrome is one of the best songs I've heard in 2021. It's the song that really sold me to the idea of Hound Roar actually joining the Dig Rock franchise that I found to be a franchise that didn't need more than two bands. Actually, Hound Roar works pretty well within this franchise because their sound doesn't collide in any way with uh, Ruby Leopard or Impish Crow. 
and they have a unique sound within 2D music that makes them stand out. They have the best singer among male Seiyu in their lineup, so that's that. Uh, there's that as well. And he delivered one of the best performances you could have in that song. Extremely technical. And we all know that Toshiki Toenagi is extremely technical as a singer. He can tackle basically anything that is th thrown at him. And he's shown plenty of times in the various 2D music projects he's a part of that he can do basically anything. So this was a really good song to listen to. It's a good song to wrap up this um, special corner for you. This is the last entry in the, the Hand That Feeds HQ's review Advent Calendar 2021. I hope you guys enjoyed these. And uh, if you did enjoy, please let me know in the comments mentioning what you did like or did not like, or if you want to see this feature return next year. I would love to make this feature return next year and review more songs that I haven't reviewed and analyze those and celebrate how good the voices and the songs are and how unexpected the 2D music industry can be. Once again, thank you so much to everyone for checking this feature. If you watched all episodes in this feature, this are 24 episodes. A uh, big thank you. At least I hope you did find these analyses videos interesting to you. Once again, if you want to see more of these next year, please leave a comment and I will see to it that it returns. And now that we are on the 24th, I wish you all a Merry Christmas if you guys celebrate it and a Happy New Year. Stay awesome! Stay safe, and I'll see you guys in 2022. Thank you.